immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the long rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. We can talk better without guns, Barton. I got nothing to say to you. You might be a whole lot safer talking fur cane instead of a guinea. Voting for him be even better. I'd rather be dead than vote for that swine. No! You're breaking my arm! The man's neck breaks just as easy. Now, who are you going to be voting for? I'm losing my patience, spot. Now, let me hear it. Who are you going to be voting for? Kane! The whole thing louder and clearer. I'm voting for Ryder Kane. Just the way I'm going to want to hear you say it at the assembly meeting. And just don't forget, it ain't everywhere in the world a man's got the right to vote the way he sees fit. <laughs> The sun is at top. Why we hurry? We reach settlement before dark anyway. Yeah, I guess I have been pushed a little, Chingachgook. But we've never been to Hopeville before. Figured on getting there before dark and doing a little sightseeing. Oh, all village same. We see many. <laughs> Houses, roads, people. Huh. One tree in forest. Much better. I don't hanker spending too much time in towns myself. Doesn't look like he's hunting four-legged game, does it? Here come the sitting ducks now. He stopped ducks. I'll take care of that bushwhacker. to me, he's the victim of his own ambush. That shot, did you? Gun went off out of plain surprise. But he did run into my fist. He'll be coming to in a minute. Boy, that low-down ambushing skunk! He might be all you say he is, mister. But that's no reason to mark yourself with murder. It ain't murder to kill a snake before he gets his fangs into you. Snake? Skunk? All I see lying there is a human being with a right to a fair trial, no matter what he's done. I'll give him a fair trial. Let's take him in, Mr. Kate. Chingus Cook and me are heading for Hopeville. Be no trouble at all for us to take him in. I'm the one he tried to murder, stranger. And I'm the one that's going to take him in. Now get out of my way. Well, Lyman, does it matter who takes Barton into the sheriff? Well, how do we know this stranger ain't going to turn him loose? I'm sure he won't. After all, he did save us from an ambush. Look me up when you get to Hopeville. I'd like to thank you properly. Ask anybody there for Ryder Kane. Angry one. A bay smooth-tongued one. Like squaw. There's power in that smoothness, Chingachgook. Like a fine steel blade. All right, Mr. Barton. You can stop playing possum and get to your feet now. It's safe. They've gone. Reckoned I'd live a mite longer playing dead. I don't know if I should thank you for keeping me from damning my soul as a bushwhacker or to cuss you for stopping me from stamping out them two vermin. Mr. Barton, I'd choose thanking because I don't hold a bushwhacking any more than I do shooting a man when he's lying down. It weren't easy forcing myself to wait for them behind that tree. My insides are tortured. Part of me knowing I got no right to take human life. But most of me hoping the good Lord will have mercy on me for ridding this territory of the evil of Ryder Kane. We've heard of Ryder Kane. Could be part of the reason why we're headed for Hopeville. What business would you have with Ryder Kane, stranger? Don't know yet. Got a letter from a friend of ours asking us to come here. Seems he didn't care much for Ryder Kane either. 
Ain't nobody in Hopeville put anything in writing against Kane. Seems you don't know Miles Gentry. Who be a stranger? I'm called Hawkeye. This is my blood brother, Chingachgook. Miles talked about you off and on some time back. Guess I don't have to worry about you turning me over to the sheriff now. Mr. Barton, when a man takes the law into his own hands, he's got to answer for it. You don't mean that. Turning me over to the sheriff's like throwing me into a lion's den. I gave my word I'd bring you in. But I'll see that you get a fair trial. If I live that long, Kane's got the sheriff in his pocket, same as he's got the rest of Hope Bill. Mr. Barton, I've never lost a wager playing on the side of the law. I've got nobody's word but yours that the law's playing a crooked game in these parts. What if Miles Gentry backed me up? Would you believe me then? Like the gospel. I'll take you to him. It's right on the way into town. I told you I'd take it a Miles Gentry. Well, there he is. You see what's written there? Them's his own words. It was like he was expecting to be killed. There's Will Hawkins. Will could have told you about Ryder Kane. Or Chubb Wilson. My brother. He believed in Ryder Kane, worked for him. And when he found out what Kane was up to, it tore him up all inside. He ran to get as far away as he could. But Kane and his men caught up to him. Would you call me bushwhacker for trying to rid ourselves of this murderer? What you say is true, Mr. Barton. No jury would pin that name on you. Them jury men will be thinking of their own necks, not mine. Kane's got a plan, Hawkeye. He runs Hopeville. And day after tomorrow, when he gets himself named permanent chairman of the assembly, he'll have his grip over the whole territory. And everybody at his mercy, bleeding every shilling and farthing he can out of our sweat and toil. You got any proof of this? A letter my brother sent me before he was killed. Well, anybody could write anything in a letter. Kane would just laugh it off. Ralph knew Kane was going to kill him. He wrote that down. And he told everything about how Kane planned these murders. Name and names, given dates. Even about Miles Gentry. I got the letter same day Miles was killed. Then that letter would be valuable evidence in a court of law. I'd like to see it. Where I've got it hid is in the opposite direction from the jail. I reckon it'll have to keep, Barton. That's the power of a lie. Just what I expect from him. He's a troublemaker, he is. Ask anybody in town. I'm not interested in opinions off the street. I merely mentioned the notion of Mr. Barton's that that jail cell might be his coffin. I'm only a sheriff, not judge and jury. I'll lock him up. Court decides what to do with them. You mean Ryder Kane tells you what to do? I'm beholden to no man. This is a peaceable town. We never have no trouble. Except with him. He never did have no respect for the law, never will. I give you my hand. No harm will come to him whilst he's in my jail. And here's mine. If any accidents happen to Mr. Barton, you'll have to answer to me personally. We'll look in on you. Get in that cell. Hello there. My pleasure, gentlemen. Have a seat. No need for ceremony. Especially since I have my life to be grateful for. I take it Barton's in jail? That's right. We just left the jail. I could have saved you that piece of travel. If you hadn't stuck your nose in and let me finish that dirty bushwhacker. Lyman, the matter's settled. We're all friends here at this table. Jenny, a couple of pints of ale for my friends here, and don't skimp the brim. Uh, never mind, Jenny. Thanks, just the same. What brings you to Hopeville? Just looking the country over. You'll be moving on soon, then? We might. And again, we might not. What business you got here? Man of forest, not have business. Come to town, look over. Maybe stay, maybe go. I've just realized. You know my name, and Brett Lyman's. But we neglected to learn yours. He is called Hawkeye, by all Indian tribe. This is my Mohican brother, Chingachgook. Hawkeye, eh? That ought to mean you got pretty sharp eyes. You see that dark spot over there?
And that's without looking. That's a pretty good toss. Chingachgook and me haven't had much of a chance to look around town, so we'll be getting along. Chingachgook. Here's yours, Mr. Lyman. Good day, gentlemen. out of his way, Lyman. But make sure that he stays out of ours. Let's mosey over there and see if we can find out why these folks act like we got the plague. It's not plague. All people in this town afraid, like elk, when not have leader, scatter when wolf attack. Now, wolf won't attack an elk herd with a king elk leading them. Maybe that's what this town needs. Someone they can trust. Someone who'll make them stand up together and fight. You remember that town that we stopped at early this morning? Remember the man that we spoke to? Mm -hmm. Everyone in the colonies will listen to him. Go and get him, Chingachgook. Tell him what's happening here. I'm sure he'll come back with you. Well, what my brother do? I'm going to get that letter from Mr. Barton. The letter. Storage shed. It's a loose board. Fine. <laughs> I signed his death warrant, turning him over to you. He tricked me. Got out of his cell. I ordered him to stop. He'd got away if I hadn't shot him. Maybe you didn't listen when I told you I'd hold you to account for anything that happened like this. You'll go to the gallows, Sheriff, along with those you're working for. All right, stop shaking. That there Hawkeye ain't gonna be living another day. A warm show for my horse and the best grain. And uh, see to it you rub her down well, Osler. I promised her that consideration for her extra duty tonight. Ah, a bit of warmth. Be prudent not to let it waste. Ben! Oh, Hawkeye! You're the one man in the colonies I knew I could count on. Well, we've got to stand together, Hawkeye. Woodsmen and townsmen. Else, how am I ever going to convince the politicians that my plan of colonial union is vital to all of us? Ah, but come. I'll sign the register and we can discuss matters in the comfort of my room. Thank you, Lyle. Oh, I'll not be needing that. The heat of a pan's only temporary. And my blood still runs warm enough to keep me in snug dreams all night. Chingachgook, that hostler was either half asleep or quite deaf. I wonder if it would be asking too much of you to see that my mare is properly bedded down. My brother Hawkeye tell me you are great white chief. That all chiefs across great white waters give you honor. But you are like papoose. You have great love for horse, too. <laughs> take care of a good servant, and you'll have a friend that'll take care of you. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you, Les. Room three. Hawkeye. <laughs> good night. Good jaws hanging loose, Jenny. A tyrant, no matter how minute he might be, is like a worm in an apple tree, Hawkeye. And if it's not plucked out in time, it'll engulf the whole tree, and then the orchard. Well, we've found the worm in this tree, all right. Then we must pluck him out. Ah, <laughs> at the very bottom. 
A little something I invented, Hawkeye. And now I can peruse that letter you mentioned to me without having the words dance in front of me. You'll have to wait till I find it. Well, from the way you spoke, I assumed you had it on your person. No, but I know where it's hidden. Then get it, man. And if it contains all the information you've reported to me, the least we'll be able to do is get an indictment of murder against Mr. Kane. scurry into his hole? Maybe. More than likely, it's just the floor settling. But be sure and lock your door. Ryder Kane might be fool enough to try violence on you. A farthing's worth of good advice is a more prudent investment than a pound's worth of stubborn pride. Oh, about that letter. It would be most effective if I were to have it to present to the assembly before the election takes place. Good night. Good night, Hawkeye. Those fancy spectacles Ben Franklin made. He ain't gonna be able to read that there letter. Three to one. That's not the kind of odds I like to be up against. Now give it here. Last time, if you don't tell me what you did with that letter, I'm going to finish you off with your own rifle here. You won't shoot, Lyman. That letter's worth your life, not if nobody else ever finds it. Now, I'm going to count to three, and your tongue better be waggling before I get there. One, two... Put that rifle down. That letter's worth my life, too, Lyman. But letter or no letter, in a few hours, I'm going to be elected permanent chairman of the assembly. Even the permanent chairman of the assembly can walk the steps to the gallows. Not Ryder Kane. After today, there won't be a voice big enough to dare raise itself against me. Not even Benjamin Franklin's. Today's young yet. You haven't been elected. This isn't really an election, Hawkeye. I'm merely going through the formality of permitting the people to say I in my favor. Keep working on him. If he hasn't stopped acting like a hero by the time I get back, I'll let you finish counting. Much as I want that letter, Hawkeye, I'm kind of hoping that you won't break. Me look everywhere. My brother Hawkeye, like mist in morning sun, he disappeared. If only he told us where he was going. People are already gathering at the meeting house, which means the voting will take place within the hour. Have you seen Ryder Kane? Last time me see him, he head into woods. 
That's strange. My judgment of such a man dictates that under ordinary circumstances, he'd be lording it in the tavern at this moment. Him not there. Nor is Big Mouth. Big Mouth? Lyman. Work for Kane. Chingachgook, you find them, and I'm sure you'll find Hawkeye. I'm not waiting for Kane. Forgot to tell you, it isn't loaded. Maybe not with ball and powder. There's something in here, all right. Looks like a piece of paper. Couldn't be that letter, could it? Find something to get it out. Oh. Ah! scalps for this. Now just untie me and get me on my feet. Any scalps to be taken around here will be done by Ben Franklin. All right, my brother. And I consider it a great privilege to be allowed to welcome to our midst that great defender of human rights, assemblyman at large from Philadelphia, publisher of the Great Gazette, representative of Massachusetts and Georgia, and deputy postmaster general of all the colonies, Mr. Benjamin Franklin. Well, stand up, Mr. Franklin. Let the citizens of Hopevale get a good look at you. <clears throat> Mr. Kane, whenever an old political war horse like myself rises to his feet before an assemblage, he has the urge to make a speech. Do you mind? Hopevale's a citadel of free speech, Mr. Franklin. Go right ahead. Thank you. <laughs> and keep your ears open, a lot of you. You don't want to miss a word of this. It'll give you something to tell your children and your grandchildren. You couldn't be more right, Mr. Kane. Well, don't just stand there. They're not allowed here. Get rid of them. Do as I say or I'll break you. Get out of here, you two, or sit down. I'm in charge. Seems to me that Ben Franklin still has the floor. Maybe you'd better sit down, Mr. Kane. It is not necessary to recount the crimes committed by Ryder Kane upon the people of this community. You know what they are. It just remains for me to place the contents of this letter into the hands of the proper authority. And as fate has decreed for all tyrants since time immemorial, justice will be done. As for those words Mr. Kane promised I'd give you to hand down to posterity, let me add this, my friends. You are the citizens of a great new world. In this wilderness, you are planting the seeds of what must surely become a great and glorious civilization. Have faith in yourselves and in your neighbors. White and chief, your speak. And your with golden tongue. Better than that, generation With a golden heart. Thank you for their most priceless possession. Their blessed inheritance of freedom. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. <laughs> <laughs>